Hello Anderson County, this is Councilman Brett Sanders recapping April 19th, 2022's council meeting. Uh, third readings, we had three things on uh, third reading today. Uh, one was to amend our code of ordinances for the time period or consideration of a project as it comes if it's been disapproved by the planning commission. Uh, used to, they could just keep coming back, coming back, coming back. Now uh, we have a time frame submitted in there that is six months. And it's not a, a time frame if someone comes in with, with a project and there's a few minor changes, things of that nature, they'll be addressed and continue to move forward. But if a project's denied, uh, you can't just keep bringing back the, the same project over and over. We had River Oaks Subdivision, Special Tax District, and that was 75% uh, I think is the law of property owners have to sign off and what it was there was some roads in the subdivision that weren't built to county standards and the county was not allowed or able to take those roads in. This special tax district will uh, allow the homeowners to get their roads to county specs via bond and I think I looked through the numbers and with the property owners there I think it came up to about five hundred dollars a year over the next 10 years per homeowner to get their roads up to uh, county standard. We also had Project Yale which we now know is Kelly Engineering. Uh, that was the final ring tonight is a six million dollar expansion. Uh, 60, 80 new jobs at $22 and some change per hour and it will increase their square footage from where they are now when it's all said and done to a 80,000 square foot facility. Second rating we had uh, a zoning change in District 4, my district from R10 to a R, R20, from R20 to an R10. Uh, the developers have actually met with uh, some of the people in, in the area and addressed their concerns that they had. And a lot of people feel like um, they're kind of left in the dark or the uncertainty scares a lot of people. But uh, when you have a, a quality developer or a builder, someone that wants to be a part of the community, what better way to be a part of the the community then to sit down with the people, address those concerns, answer any questions they have, and I think you find that the whole process works a lot smoother and you have a lot more support for your project just based on getting facts out there and, and clarifying any misconceptions or rumors. Uh, we also did a ground lease with Duke Energy on uh, the battery storage out at the Civic Center which was basically a renewal and that also supply power to the C Civic Center in case of uh, an emergency or an outage. We had uh, a stormwater ordinance or an ordinance uh, on drainage and utility easements and what that is uh, going to do is help uh, not only uh, storm water, but it will help some of these neighborhoods where you have uh, a neighborhood and the topography is a certain way and you know water's going to flow a certain way. And what it does do, it allow them to uh, use it for utility and water easements and those will be a part of, on the plat, which will be the property owners and or the HOA and it will allow measures to be in place that, that's not really messed with and it will help uh, detention ponds or retention ponds. I have a lot of calls in my district and you know there's uh, some neighborhoods that prior to storm water and, and if you know the neighborhood starts here and you buy the lowest lot in the neighborhood at the end and there's a big creek behind your house well guess what all that water is going to flow to the lowest point and what this is going to do is uh, I think it's going to help with stormwater issues plus it also help with uh, unsuspecting property owner that comes in buys a lot or buys a house and then realizes later that it's in a, a, a area that's susceptible uh, not really to flood the house but for a lot of, of water flow there and you know it, it upsets me uh, being on you know that's not a, a council issue you know so it's not something that I can go in and say oh well I can get the county to come out here and we can do this or that you know you're on private property and there's laws and things that uh, prohibit us from doing those so I'm glad we got an ordinance in place now or coming into place that is going to uh, help protect people uh, especially in the future and uh, have a better understanding of how, how the water flows. We transferred some property uh, the old solid waste 
convenience center to the Slabtown uh, Fire Department or 3 and 20 Fire Department for uh, in the Slabtown area for a uh, uh, fire training site which will allow other fire departments to use it as well. In the town of Iva, there was some property there that wasn't sold uh, at the tax sale that kind of fell back onto the county. Uh, I think the property needed some cleaning up. That property, the town of Iva, we donated it to the town of Iva and they're going to uh, clean it up and utilize that property to create uh, more wealth on the tax map, you know, a house there or, or a business or something of that nature. So it's good to see uh, you know, some of those areas being cleaned up and put back back to use not only for the community but as a, a revenue source for the county as well. We also uh, tonight voted on first reading for Duke Energy to approve an easement for them in the Belton area and I think uh, the mayor of Belton and some other people had reached out as well for a charging station. So electric charging station uh, will be in Belton and that would be uh, two more readings. So everyone was on board and I'm glad to see that we can help some of our municipalities, especially with uh, moving into the future. The last thing tonight, where was uh, several roads in a subdivision that was is getting completed. Our roads and bridges department went out, inspected the roads, having been inspecting the, the process as it moves along. Uh, those roads met county standard and they were brought in under the county system. <laughs>